defaulted on my built-in mic. So um, again, welcome to the five stage strategic guesting uh, uh, presentation, actually workshop. So um, I'm just gonna share with you what it is, how it works and uh, just some tactics, but also, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be offering something special that we've never offered before. As you may know, we've got our podcast ignition system where we focus on four different piece, parts of podcasting. Uh, number one is planning, number two is production, three, promotion, and four is profit. The strategic guesting has a lot to do with the planning, but it has everything to do with promotion as well as sales. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's one thing I love about the planning stage. And if, you're, if you've been in marketing or you've had your own business for any length of time, you know how important that is. So before I get into that, I just wanted to share, you know, um, a lot of, I, I get asked all the time, like, how do I promote my podcast? How do I make money at my podcast? So we're always focusing on those four pillars, the planning, production, promotion, and profit. And when we do, you know, um, I just was at a workshop and Edison Research, I believe, is one of the premier research companies when it comes to data for podcasting. And one of the reports that they came out with, they partnered with NPR and did a study on spoken word audio, which includes podcasting. And of course, all the numbers are are just skyrocketing. And I would say even since attending that conference, it seems like everybody's podcasting. Not only is everybody podcasting, but everybody's helping people podcast. And, you know, um, I mentioned it earlier that, you know, I've been podcasting for about three years. One of the my strongest suits is with guests. And I think it's because it's where my heart goes. I really love having guests. I love to ask people questions. We've got another training that we're working on that we're coming out with called Flex Your Curiosity, which really helps you ask better questions as an interviewer. So when I release that, I'll be sure to let you know. But, um, but you know, when we're looking at how do we promote, how do we make money, one of the things this, this research came out with is the fact that, you know, the top three ways that people find things like podcasts are number one, are through searches. So they go online onto Google or another search engine, they look for a topic and then boom, they click on the link for a podcast and there they are listening to your show or watching it on YouTube. And the second thing is referrals. So someone tells them, hey, here's a good show. Now, honestly, and I always say this, I'm surprised that that wasn't number one. I thought as much effort as so many podcasters put into referrals and reviews and all that, I thought for sure that would be number one, but it's number two, you know, so it's still at the top of the list. Number three is social media. What struck me about that is that you can control two of those top three things. And one of the reasons that right now I'm really focusing on guesting and, and helping podcasters understand the power of that is that when you do your guesting correctly, you can improve both social, social search and um, web search um, exponentially, actually. So you've got your own things that you're publishing and putting out there, but when you have someone else doing it, guess what? You're hitting all three, right? So they're, you, they're endorsing your show by being on your show, um, whether they want to, or, like whether they are like actually endorsing it or not to their listeners, that is a credible person on your show, basically saying like, listen to this show. So, um, so I, so what an incredible way to hit all three. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that with our podcast ignition system, now we set up, uh, we help podcasters, whether they have a podcast or not, set everything up so that number one, all their assets are in place, everything's set up for all four pillars. One thing that I've seen is that, you know, a lot of us are just like, you know, whatever, I've got a podcast, I'm limping along, I'm getting started like everyone tells me to, but I really want some help with, with guesting. Like, how can I get the most out of it? while I'm just getting good guests. Like a lot of us are, you know, if you're like a lot of people, it's like, I don't even know how to get guests. Like, who do I approach? How do, you know, what should the email say? Do you have an intake form? Then what happens? You know, how do I get them to show up? I mean, those no-shows can drive a person crazy. 
and I mean, at least me, that's, that's just me. Um, but it probably you too, but have you ever sat on zoom and you've done all this preparation for an interview and then the guest doesn't show up? I mean, it, it is, I don't know if there's anything that's more gut wrenching and I've been on the other side too. So I know that that just happens, but as a host, it's just so much goes into the prep and the planning and it can easily be rescheduled and the assets can be, you know, and all that time spent can be moved to whenever it's rescheduled. But but as a host, how can you prevent that? And then once you've done the interview, you know, once you're in the interview, what do you ask? Like, how does that go? What What is talked about? How can you get the most out of it, both for your listeners? How can you be on, on your listeners' behalf? And how can you also make it a great experience for your guests? And then after the show, then you're like, you know, how do I get my guests to promote the show? You know, I've, I've had them on and you know, we've given them all this free prom promotion. I mean, a lot of us spend anywhere from, if we're doing, you know, really great promoting, we're spending anywhere from a thousand, you know, to five or more thousand a month on, on promotion. And so with each episode, if you're looking at a thousand, you know, like 500 to 2,500 that you're doing just to promote that one episode, that's really a ton of value for them. So how can you get the most out of that synergy so that they're also promoting it, but you're, but they're not feeling used. They're not, you know, doing it out of, you know, obligation. They're doing it because they truly want to do it. You're a team, you've built this great relationship. So how do you do that? And that is what our five stage process addresses. So I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to show you, I'm such a spreadsheet nerd. So I'm going to show you my spreadsheet um, that started it all. Uh, this is not actually even up to date, but I'll show you our, our system. But this is an outline that I created just, I mean, years ago, this has been a work in progress this whole time. But um, you can see we've broken it up into five stages and I mentioned it on the page as well. The first stage is really about getting an ideal guest. So we have a actual spreadsheet that we use to look up like, who do we want on the show? Um, how can we, oh wait, let me see. The share screen didn't quite work. Okay, let's see. Sorry about that. Okay, so here it is. This is the spreadsheet. And um, you can see there are five stages. So we have a spreadsheet, a leads worksheet, where we actually look up who would be ideal guests on our show. And we inventory those people there. So sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, in fact, when I had a podcast where I interviewed top real estate agents, I had certain criteria that they had to meet. So I looked up the people that I wanted to interview and, and just put them down on that spreadsheet. As I was ready to start approaching them, I would add them into our five-stage white glove strategic guesting program, and they would go through this system. So as soon as they're added to the system, they're a cold lead. So they've never heard from it before. Um, a lot of times they're getting these emails and especially real estate agents, they're like, what are you trying to sell me? I had to convince them that I wasn't, that I really just wanted them on my show. I wasn't going to charge them. They really were getting a lot of promotion for their time. Uh, you know, I was really clear about what they could expect on the call, how the call would go, the fact that, you know, our interview, it will take like 30 to 40 minutes. And then I've got, you know, my selfish questions at the end that I would ask. So they were really clear. This is a win-win. This is what they're going to get. This is what I'm going to get. And then we're both going to get a ton of promotion out of it. And they were really, really happy. So when they're a cold lead, they would go in and, and we have um, email templates that assume they're not getting back to us. So it's just like another, you know, just like any uh, prospecting system that, you know, it's like the first introduction email. Um, a lot of times we, we have frequently asked questions. We've got testimonials. We've got information that gets asked a lot. Uh, and then we revise it based on the feedback that we get. So these email templates have evolved over time so that, you know, the first email is, you know, we used to keep it really short. And a lot of people say to do that. We don't do that anymore. I have a very short first paragraph that's like, boom, this is who I am. This is what I want. And if that sounds interesting, here's some more information. Here's some questions that people ask us when, when we send this email out. And it's, you know, does this cost any money? No. Have I, you know, where's the show? What are you talking about? This is what it is. Who are you talking to? This is who we're talking to. So just questions that we would always get asked. 
uh, in that process. Now, having said that, it's rare that anybody reads that first email anyway. So they'll read the first paragraph. A lot of times they'll either respond back or they will uh, just ignore it, thinking that it's spam. And then the second email is usually some kind of like, did you get this last email? Uh, you know, it probably looked like everything else, but really we want to interview you. We think you're amazing um, because I did like they fit the criteria. They must be doing something right. So I wholeheartedly believe that if we're sending the email out, this is somebody that I really want on my show. Uh, and so the goal was always in that first cold lead level to have an info call with me. So even if I have an assistant helping me process this system, even if they're the ones making the phone call, um, after, you know, there's a call that happens, I think, after the third email. If they're the ones making the call, their goal is to get an info call with me. And it takes about seven minutes and I just get on the phone. It shows that they're super important because they are and that it's for real. We're not trying to scam them or anything. This isn't a bait and switch. And I would just get on again, tell them what to expect, what they get out of it, what I get out of it. And honestly, the fact that we do have our selfish questions at the end, that helped me get a lot more guests, believe it or not, because I wasn't holding anything back. I was saying like, yeah, obviously I'm not going to just promote you for free <laughs> and not get anything out of this. This is what I'm getting out of it. I get your time. I get a little bit of time at the end. And then if we want to talk about this after, we're going to. And if we're not, we're not. Like either one of us could not want to talk to the other one after the interview. Unlikely. It has never happened, but it could happen. So this cold lead uh, level, again, it's just assuming that they're never going to get back to us. It's just, you know, hey, did you get it? Okay, we didn't hear from you. Here's another one. Okay, here's a short one. So it just goes through uh, those emails as well as a handwritten note card. We do a couple phone calls um, until, you know, it goes. So if we never hear from them, it's done. They go through the system and it's over. Uh, if they respond in any way, they get attention. So um, we have this next phase of the warm lead. Now, if it's somebody that you know, they might go straight into the warm lead level. If it's somebody who is a cold lead and they're like, what are you talking about? Then they get the warm lead email because again, it's almost always the same. It's almost always, what is this? Why are you sending these emails? I am interested. Podcasting is really hot right now. How can I get on this train without having to invest? You're doing the show. I can be your guest. This is awesome. Tell me more. So that second phase uh, is at that level. It's the warm lead. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I can have a warm lead and they still don't, um, they still don't get back to me. So I'll say like, this is what it is. And so of course we have follow-up. So there's a follow-up sequence for a warm lead, assuming that they're interested. They wouldn't have reached out if they didn't have some level of interest. So, um, so this is where like we get a text that goes out. We've got an email, a phone call. Again, there's there's a whole sequence all set up for those people. And it, you know, we've we've developed this over years and we still do. So um, at the end, I'm actually gonna tell you how you can be a part of this and use this whole system. You get all of my templates, um, you get our intake form, which is again over years of um development uh and continued to we've continued to develop it as well as the third template, the third type of template that we give away that we get asked a ton about, which is our podcast promotion guide for guests. So we use that even in the cold leads, we'll send that out. Sometimes we'll be like, Hey, here's a, here's a guide on how you can promote it and how you get promoted. And they like it. A lot of times they won't even open it, but the fact that you sent them that shows your level of commitment to promoting their episode. So again, it's just this, holistic look at showing them value from the very beginning. So, <coughs> excuse me. So once they're, okay, so they're a warm lead. Now they say, yes, I would like to be on your show. That doesn't mean that they've done everything. So we still have things for them to do. As soon as they've agreed to be on the show, they need to fill out an intake form. Um, if you are really strict about who's on your show, you might want to call it an application. Um, we, we are pretty confident in our, how we screen ahead of time 
And so for us, it's an intake form. We're like, if we screwed up in prospecting you, then that's on us. We don't tell them that, but like in my mind, it's like, that's on us. If we've prospected wrong, I'm going to learn about, you know, I'm going to learn how to do this better in the future. Um, a couple of times we've considered the application, uh, but again, the prospecting's worked so well. Um, and for our clients, that's actually something I coach on. So, um, but for us, it's an intake form. Now, if I put it out to the world, like, Hey, who wants to be on my show? Which I, I sometimes do very rarely do I, um, but if I do, it is an application and it's different from our intake form. So there's like an application that's like, do you fit this certain criteria? And then we have our intake form, which means, which is really, it gives me a lot of information about the person who's coming on the show. Uh, for us, it's a lot more than just an interview where we're just gathering information. Like we want our show to be interesting, right? So that means you're connecting with somebody. Listeners want to hear you have a conversation with somebody that you care about, somebody that, you know, you're connected with. And so during this time, you really want to know that person and you want to have better questions. And I don't know about you, but when I know a little bit, it gives me a little bit more of like, I know what to ask. Like I have more questions in mind. It makes me more curious as the more I know about them, the more curious I get. So it makes the interview better. So we ask questions that some of which have everything to do with the show, some of which are just about them and the type of things I like that I would get curious about. And so, um, so in the intake form, I take care of that as well as like, how do we promote you? You know, where are you found online? How, you know, tell me about yourself. Give me all the links to everything. That way, when I sit down to research the guest, it takes me a lot less time because I have all those links handy. I've got a picture of them. I've got, you know, everything we need to promote them as well or introduce them on the show. So the intake form is golden. <laughs> and again, it's included in our um, five stage system, um, which I'll, I'll tell you about in here in a minute, but, but again, so stage three is the, is where we're actually getting them on the books. So first is the intake form, then is they schedule their appointment. Now there are, um, there are times where someone will fill out the intake form and then not complete the schedule, the actual, uh, interview. So of course we've got a sequence for that as well. Usually now with our system, that doesn't happen because it's all kind of together, but we do have a way to check to not send them to the next stage until we have both the intake form and the appointment scheduled. So that is stage three, that's stage three. Stage four, they're booked. Okay. You've got everything you need from them. Now it's your time to prepare them so that they can enjoy the process do a better job, like they can sound better. So you're giving them advice on the next email sequence gives them advice on, you know, how to get their room ready, what kind of, you know, they need a microphone, they need a camera, uh, how to, you know, what to turn off, basically a how to have a really good experience during our time together. And don't forget that this is when your appointment is. So there's those reminders as well. Um, and the fifth phase is, um, don't, you can just ignore um, seven, that isn't a part of it, but um, the fifth phase is it's launched and the follow-up. So once it's la launched, uh, the day of, you know, as soon as you interview them, uh, now our, our podcasters, typically they'll schedule the release date right away. And so by the time the interview is happening, you can say like, this is when we anticipate releasing the episode. Um, and, and then the email that goes out the day after the interview, that's still part of the scheduled phase. Uh, so like the day of, or the day after the interview, you let them know, like, this is when we expect to launch the episode. And, um, and then once this launched happens, the day it's launched, it, the email goes out. It's like, yay, your episode's launched. Here's where you can find it. Again, here's the promotion guide. So, you know, with both of us promoting it, you're going to get even more exposure. Uh, and this is why, and this is how. And then it's, um, you know, after that, a few days later, we've got a sequence again that goes out. So it's, it's, hey, it's launched. Then it's like, you know, have you seen the social media? Because by then, our social media goes out after it's launched. So it's like launch and then social media goes out. So we want to make sure that they're seeing it, if they have any questions. 
We also send out a piece of media or more. We actually send out a video that our guests can use however they want to. So they can edit it and use it. They just need to give us credit. So um, then after that, it's like, hey, do you know of anyone else that fits this criteria that you think would enjoy this experience as well? So that is the five-step strategic guesting. And one thing I will say, um, you know, a few of the things that really great that come out of it, number one is that your guests know what to expect. Uh, you know, in the beginning as you're testing, like we just launched a new podcast and, you know, you're, you know, you're learning. Usually you've got a lot of really good, um, you know, friendly guests that can go through this process with you as it's all getting, you know, worked out. Um, but then as you, as it starts clipping, it is such a great experience for your guests because they know what to expect. You've given them all this great advice that they can either take or don't. A lot of times I'll get guests asking me, you know, do I really need a, a microphone? Do I really need earbuds? And I'll be like, you know, you don't have to. We'll still promote it. But remember, that's your brand that you're putting out there. So if you choose not to follow our advice, you're just not going to get as good of a quality outcome. And so just really help the, the emails and the scripts are structured to help coach them through the process as well. Now, I, you know, I podcast about podcasting. So a lot of my guests know what they're doing. And even for them, they've, I've gotten amazing feedback about how informed they felt. Um, you know, obviously they know how to promote podcasts for the most part, but having the media was really helpful for them and just the communication. So a couple advantages, number one is we're really prospecting in a targeted way. And number two is that we, um, you know, our guests are happy. Like we're building this relationship. So by the time I'm interviewing them, they already feel taken care of. And so it just makes the interview so much better. And then afterwards, when you're, when like for us, we have goals with our guests. Like I don't bring someone on the show if I don't feel like either I could help them promote their service or they can help me promote my service or, or I just, you know, think they're amazing and want to have them on the show and and their friends or people that I like or if you know I know ahead of time what types of outcome I'm looking for and I have an idea of what outcome they are looking for in fact we outright ask them like what is it that you want out of the show so my priority is always both it's like uh, in fact even during the interview I'm looking at that outcome at the end of it like do I feel like they were able to get that outcome so so at the end of the day Again, it's back to the pillars. You know, the five stage white glove strategic guesting system helps us, you know, it's the planning stage, but it helps us with production um, because, you know, we're getting these great guests. It helps us with promotion, not only because the interview itself is better, but also because, um, you know, they, they are uh, more active in the content and, um, you know, it just it just really improves the outcome of you know I know I just repeated myself but it really does it just improves the outcome of the content and then when it comes to promotion and profit I feel like this system nails it because with the promotion not only again because of the production because you have better content you're able to promote your own show so much better and more effectively but also you have you're leveraging their audience so they're getting out there and they've they're empowered to and eager to help you succeed because you've built this great relationship. And then with the profit, not only are you getting more opportunities to have get on air leads, but you also because you have more exposure um, from their audience as well as your own, but also you have this potential either collaborator or even potential client. So um, so guesting is a huge part. Um, we do have this five stage uh, system. In fact, I'll show you just real quickly what it actually looks like. So if you're with high level, you're going to recognize this. We have our own branded high level platform called my pod blast. So I'm just going to share this screen real quick. Um, share screen. So here you see, um, okay, so this is my pod blast and in it we have 
the we have the intake um, intake form. We have the booking. So if they want like the quick info call, which that's thirty minutes, but but we can but you can set that up for whatever time frame you want. But you can see there's a landing page, um, book the interview, and the thank you page. And then we do, if you're with high level, this will make a lot of sense, but we have triggers in the background that um, create, We, you know, there are custom values that create these um, triggers. So let's see, we've got, yeah, I was going to say, it took a minute to come up. I'm like, wait, we've got a lot. So um, these are the triggers the, that affect the actual uh, movement through the stages. And then we've also got another trigger where if you use our system on our platform, then once an, once an interview, like let's say you are like, hey, I just want all of my leads to go into your platform instead of using your own high level account, then um, we can, there's a tag you can add and it will trigger, it can be zapped over to your account. So, so that, you know, everything that's, has to do with your interviews and your guests can be kept on one. Um, and you can do this even within your own system where they're on, in one account, one location, and then be zapped over to your own location. So we've got a trigger for that as well. And then this is really where the, the, cam the campaigns are really where all of the, um, let me find it here, all of the emails and um, the sequences come in. So here we have, you know, the different stages um, and they're timed out. So like as soon as someone is added to this campaign, you know, this first email goes out. I'll just show you an example of what it looks like. Um, and because you use all these custom values, you literally, when we walk you through the setup, all you have to do is add your own custom values and then you have your own these email uh, campaigns work. So you, you go through and you can edit them and customize them, test them, make sure they work. Um, and then you can see as the campaign goes through, there's email, email, email call, a uh, note card. And so um, you're just triggered to send that note card out. And then the email goes out a few days later. So um, there's one of these campaigns for each of the levels. And... We also have an extra email that goes out if they're a potential collaborator. So, you know, with the podcast ignition system, this is an integral part of it. So we have processes. I've got like a mean amount of zaps that make everything easy. Uh, and then we also we also have um, uh, processes in place. So when you're a podcast ignition system client, we help you get your podcast, all the assets in place. We get all the processes in place. We've got custom zaps like crazy. Uh, and then we also, so we use Process Street for all the processes. That helps a lot with production. So where this five-stage white glove guesting system is at the beginning is planning. Then the second part is uh, production. And we've got processes that it's, they're, they're insane that help you through production um, in the third phase of distribution, same thing. We've got a lot of uh, processes in place for that through Process Street, and then um, and then profit kind of comes back to this my my pod blast. But in the past, we've never separated it. So when you're a podcast ignition system client, you know there's a there's a setup, and it, it's a you know we do an incredible job to make sure everything's in place. But if you just want to skip all that and you just want access to my pod blast, we've never offered it before and I'm going to do it right now. So um, I'm not really sure for how long if it if it goes really awesomely, like I, there's nothing more I want than to work with more podcasters and guesting and having great interviews. It's really like I'm so passionate about it. I love it. I feel like it's it's in my wheelhouse. You know, it, it's I just love it. It's my favorite thing. Um, so to be able to share this with more podcaster, it, it means a lot to me. So there are a lot of people that I know that are on high level already. So if you want to buy the snapshot, the snapshot's available. Um, however, whether or not you have high level, you might want to choose to have it on our platform. And here's why. So if you don't have high level, you definitely want it on our platform because it's a less expensive way to, um, to do it rather than go out and get your own account. 
but also you're going to have um, one on one guidance as you get set up. You'll have support from us. We've got a, a Power Podcaster Slack channel that you'll be part of. And, um, and you know, I'll be here to answer all your questions as, as you're working through it. Uh, and then it's also we're developing it all the time. So as a as a member on our platform, you you get that ongoing guidance. You get I send out emails whenever I found that, you know, we're finding better results with different emails. Like we've added emails or we've changed emails. Uh, we've added fields. You get to be part of all that. We're also coming out with some new landing pages and forms. So. Uh, if you're an ongoing member, you have access to that as well. So you can, again, you can either get the snapshot and just pay a one-time fee, nothing ongoing, or you can um, you can skip the setup. Um, we do have a, a, a $500 setup if you want ongoing support and you use our system. Um, but if you want to skip the setup, like you already know how to do all this and you know you understand custom fields and how to use high level and you already have high level, then you can just get right on to the monthly. The monthly is 297, which is, um, yeah, just ongoing to stay on the program. Again, you get continued access to it, you get updates, you get the new templates that we come out with, as well as um, we answer your questions. So, and then if you are a high level user and you have the snapshot, it is uh, 947. One time you get you get all of the templates. Um, I it includes uh, a consultation, and I'm actually going to have a full on training that you'll have access to as well. So, um, and the good thing about that is, is if you think about it, um, I believe that our five stage white glove uh, strategic guesting is, you know, honestly, it's one of I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use anything else personally. I just really feel it's it's so been so successful for us, and um, you know having it available separately is a huge asset. So um, I would love to work with you and help you get set up. So uh, and it also includes. Uh, I will be giving out um, the lead spreadsheet as well. So if you sign up here in the next. I mean, I don't know for how long, because like I said, like I'm just testing this out. So, but I know it right as of now, it includes the lead worksheet and as a special bonus right this second um, and probably for the next few days. But um, I'm also going to include the zap that zaps the leads from the lead worksheet over to my pod blast. So uh, just ask me any questions that you have and I'd be happy to answer them. And um, yeah, happy Wednesday. If you have uh if also we will have another training next Wednesday. So I hope to see you there and um, happy podcasting.